Hey, hey, hey! Woohoo! Yeah! The store here, my friend. Yeah, I was just enjoying some of that heavy metal. Yeah, as you can see, I don't really hum or do heavy metal sounds really, really well. But let me tell you, I can play one mean air guitar. That's right, my friends. Woo! It's another math video. Yeah, yeah. Lesson 9.4. Can you feel it? Yeah, I can. And we're back into, whoa. It's all in the section of geometry. Now we're looking at line graphs. And you may have noticed, you say, Mr. Wara, there's no lesson 9.3. And you know, you would be correct. And yes, you win. Um, uh. You win a free shout out. That's right, a shout out. <laughs> Anyway, and that was in part because the lesson really was so hands-on with measuring, uh, what was the temperature of different glasses, and so that's just absolutely something I couldn't do. So there will be no lesson 9.3. But let's look at the essential question. Yes, how can you use a line graph to display and analyze real-world data? I like that word, real-world. You know, it's coming up because you know what's going to happen, right? That's right. Unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Yes, it says here a line graph is a graph that uses line segments to show how data changes over time. The series of numbers placed at fixed distances that label the graph are the graph's scale. The intervals or difference between the values on the scale should be equal. You know, this kind of makes me think about where this lesson may go. Think about those things that change over time. You know, like temperature, which is what we're probably going to be looking at today. Temperature is something that kind of changes over time. Something that you could measure. Okay, might be real, a little bit more cool in the morning. A little bit warmer by, you know, midday and so forth. This is graph the data. Use the graph to determine the times between which the greatest temperature change occurred. Okay, and we're going to again refer back to our math vocabulary. This is our terminology to make sure that we understand. Now we have some recorded temperatures here. Looks like we have the time, which this is in the a.m. Okay, and that would be the morning, my friends, right? So you guys know. And so one o'clock in the morning, then we have two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we have these different temperatures, and they're correlated with each time. At one o'clock in the morning, we know it was 51 degrees Fahrenheit. And they actually list, if you look here at the very first one, they've already put that in for us. It says right related number of pairs. Remember, we used to call those, we call those ordered pairs of data. And data is just that information that we're going to use as ordered pairs. Well, there you go. So we're going to show, associate that 1 o'clock in the morning to 51 degrees. All right, there's our table. All right, so let's look at step one. This Mr. Wara is notorious for not following the steps, but we're going to try our best. It says step one, it says for the vertical axis, choose a scale and an interval that are appropriate for the data. It says you can show a break in the scale between zero and 40 since there are no temperatures between zero degrees and 44 degrees. Okay, that's a, that's a big mouthful right there. So let's make sure that we understand what they're asking us to do. So the vertical axis, they're just referring to it as the vertical axis. It's the Y, but they're using the vertical, means up and down. And if you look at the recorded temperatures, you can see on the chart or on the graph that we have temperatures listed there on the vertical axis. Now choose a scale and an interval that are appropriate for the data. So if we refer back to our vocabulary, you'll see here that a scale is just a series of numbers placed at fixed distances that label the graph. That's all that is. When we decide we're going to start at a certain number and go to another number. Okay, that's just the scale. The interval is the difference between the values on the scale. So let's look at the temperature. You can see our fixed numbers, our scale. We have 40, 42, 44, that's the scale. And the interval refers to the difference between that scale. So between 42 and 40 is 2. And then you notice the next one is 44 and 42. That's 2. So you see our interval on our vertical axis is a difference of 2 with each line. That means in between each line we have another number, right? We'd have 51, 53, 45. Those would all fit in between. Now it says you can show a break 
in the scale. And what that means is a break is something that separates something. When you figure out something that breaks, right? And if you take a look at that portion on the line graph, you can see that that is the break. Okay, and the break is just a break in the scale, meaning that if you notice, it starts at zero and jumps all the way to 40. Well, that's not a difference of two, but by putting that break on the line graph, you can show that we're not starting, we're letting you know that that is at zero, but we don't have any temperatures, right, between zero and it looks like all the way to 44, so we showed a little bit of a break. Now, why do we do that? We wouldn't want to have our line graph be way at the top, and if we'd list each number, one of those numbers, two, four, six, eight, we'd have this really, really small looking graph. So this is a way of showing the data to us in a more precise way, okay? Uh-oh, so now I just realized after doing step one that I haven't even completed our ordered pairs. Oh my goodness, after Mr. War was going to follow the steps, he didn't fill that in. Oops, it does say write related number pairs of data as ordered pairs. Okay, this should be pretty easy. Let me just do this quickly. There we go. I think I have them correctly. I'm looking at my work here, checking, always checking and revising. Okay, all right. Now I think we can kind of move on. So for step one, they've already done that for us. So there's really, any, I'm looking at it to see if there's anything we can do, but there isn't. They've already done that labeling for us. Now step two says, for the horizontal axis, write the times of day. And then it says also we have to write a title for the graph and name each axis. And, and we've done that. So we've named each axis here. We have time and we have temperature. It says then graph the ordered pairs. Now it says complete the graph by connecting the points with line segments. Okay, so they've done a lot of this for us. And now we're going to, but we do need to complete the graph by connecting the points. Well, let's see what they have so far. They have our one o'clock and 51. And yes, you can see right where that 51 is. It is right in the middle of 1552. Okay, two o'clock says 49. And yes, that's right in between as well. And that's correct. Uh, three o'clock, I have 47 and that's correct. Okay, now this is where we have to work and put our points in. So four o'clock should say 44. And that's going to fall right on the line. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, and I also have 5 o'clock should be at 45. 6 o'clock is 44. 7 o'clock is 46. Well, we have our points going in all different directions there. Okay, now it says to connect the points with line segments. Now you can see I, I put in my first line segment. Now I do another one. Okay, this is interesting. We can kind of analyze this since this is part of our essential question. We definitely have shown that at one o'clock in the morning, the temperature was up there pretty high, uh, 51 degrees, not super high, but, and then two o'clock it dropped. And at three o'clock it dropped. So it's getting cooler as the day goes on. And then look at it, four o'clock in the morning, which is almost about the time when you, it should be the coolest, you figure on the planet Earth, because that's the time when you haven't had the sun for quite some time. And so the planets had a long time to cool off because on that, on that half, of the earth hasn't had seen sun for all those hours and then five o'clock looks like it's ready to come up a little bit but look at six o'clock it's still dropped a little bit so we've got a little bit of interesting data there showing that so a line graph is a great graph to display what happens with data over time and it's a perfect example because we do have time so you can see our graph definitely showed the data going down and then it kind of went up and it came down a little bit then went up again and one would think that at, at some point that line graph would start going up as the day as we got closer to the midday the sun's had a chance to heat up the planet a little bit okay oh we have one last little part here it says look at each line segment in the graph find the line segment that shows the greatest change in temperature between two consecutive points the greatest temperature change occurred between blank and blank well i know you hear me say this a lot but i'm going to have to say it again Great question. It is a great question. Now, we did look at each line segment. We already did that. But it does say find the line segment that shows the greatest change. Okay? The greatest change. Meaning the one difference of one to the other. Like the greatest change refers to the greatest like difference between one data, one ordered pair, and then another. And it says in the temperature, but between two consecutive points. And consecutive refers to like in a row. So they have to be next to each other. So we aren't going to be comparing like from one o'clock to six o'clock. 
We're going to have to check between 1 and 2. We're going to check between 2 and 3 and so forth. So what shows the largest change? Well, let's take a look here. We have 51, then it dropped down to 49. That's 2 degrees. Then we went down to 49 to 47. That's just 2 degrees. When we check from 3 to 4, though, we go from 47 to 44. Well, 47 minus 44 is 3. And that's 3 degrees. And then all the rest of them is only a difference of 1 degree. 6 to 7 went from 44 to 46, which is 2 degrees. The greatest temperature change occurred between, yeah, what I mentioned, that 3 degrees, from 3 a.m. and, of course, 4 a.m. And I hope that makes sense because we dropped from here to here was 3 degrees in temperature. Okay, All the rest of these were, this was only 2 this was 2. And what's interesting, when you look at the graph, you can see the decline on the graph itself. All right, page master. Woo, you're right. It's all about try this. Try this. OK, I'll give it a try. It says, Jill, use the rain gauge to collect data on the total rainfall during six days at her home in Miami. She read the amount of rain collected in the rain gauge each day and did not pour it out. Her data is shown in the table. Make a line graph to display Jill's data. All right, all right, this is just like the problem we just did. By the way, a gauge, if you don't know that, this is a, a measuring tool. We have the table over here. It says rainfall collected. We have the day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So she did this for six days. And then it says the rainfall she collected on each day. So write related pairs of data as ordered pairs. So we start off with Monday, she had two inches. So now we can go ahead and put Tuesday, which again was two inches. Wednesday, that's gonna be three inches. Thursday, now step two says, choose a scale and an interval for the data. All right, I think making each line for the rainfall collected would make sense for the vertical axis to just use that's the rainfall collected because the number is going to get larger but just using one should be fine so let me i'm going to have to put in some lines here let me do this since the rainfall didn't exceed uh, nine inches i'm going to label my vertical axis with just one so of course this is going to be zero then i have one two three so you can see i have more than enough unfortunately i can't turn my page sideways to do this this is the rainfall, and of course, this is in inches. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and put my title. This was the rainfall collected. Okay, and now we have the x axis, or in this case, they're referring it to as the time axis. So we're going to have days of the week. Now, in this case, what we can do is think of it this way we have six days that we need to write across here. If I were to label this, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Look, our graph would only go this far. And that's not, we don't want our little graph to fit in this little section and then this other half is open. So what we want to do is, is maybe we can use two lines. So we come to the second line, go Monday, Tuesday, we're skipping one, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, and that's what we mean by scale. So the scale was literally to me, the range of the data here and the fixed numbers and places, but the interval refers to how much between each point to the next. So we have one, two. So the interval here is one. Here, we're just going to have the interval be two for Monday. So I'm going to list Monday right here, and I'm going to try to do it so that it'll be underneath that line right there, Monday. So Monday was two. Tuesday was two. Wednesday was three. Thursday was six. Friday was eight and notice I'm matching that up I'm looking at my Friday here and then my eight and then the last one was nine Saturday there's my line I'm following all the way up and there's nine okay so those are my points now I just need to put in my line segments okay so there's my line graph and then it says label the horizontal and vertical axis oh I did the vertical but I did not do the horizontal okay oh my goodness this is a lot of fun you know it really is Although, you know what? I am not completely happy about my graph. There's one thing that's kind of bothering me. Do you want to see some magic? Watch. Okay, did you see what I changed? Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. I don't know, my title, I thought it was a little bit too high. I had to bring it down a little bit. I know, Mr. Warrior, you're such a perfectionist. Yes, okay, now. Oh my goodness, we didn't even look at the picture here. Let's look at these two girls here. What are they? There's their gauge. Ooh, again, very focused. I like that. 
You can tell the eye contact, they're reading the level of water. Nice. Yeah, hands on. Very cool. Way to go, my friends. You know what? It's another video. Woo! Poof! Here and gone, my friends. Well, as always, it's always a pleasure to present this wonderful math lesson to you awesome, awesome fifth graders. Now, live long and prosper. And